Hi there, um, welcome and thank you for joining today's session on PGR fees and funding. Um, my name is Ms. Shohan and I am the Doctoral College Assistant Manager. So just a bit of background on the Doctoral College. So the Doctoral College is a central department that are here to uh, manage your research degree applications and support you throughout your programme as soon as you join us at DMU. So the aim of today's session is just to provide you with a little bit more information on the costing of a research degree, any additional costs that uh, may be associated with joining on a research degree at DMU, any support uh, facilities that we have, and any discounts available as well. I'll also provide some key contact information for uh, us in the Doctoral College, so should you wish to contact us after the session, you, you're able to do so. Next slide, please. So if you attended um, the intro session this morning, Dr. Alyssa Clark uh, would have gone through all the various research degrees that are available. And these are on the page at the moment, and these are the core ones that are available at DMU. So many people would typically be familiar with a standard PhD, which you have there, but there's also additional uh, programs that are available. So what you see there um, is not just the names of the research degrees that we offer, but also, and very important when it comes to your fees and funding, is the various timelines associated with your PhD, so that you can start planning now of how your program will be funded, whether you're funding it yourself, or whether it's going to be funded through a scholarship or through, through a third party. So we tend to charge fees at DMU, like most other institutions, uh, consistently throughout the year. Um, but we also have something and very different to talk programmes when you may have studied your undergraduate or your um, or your master's degree, where we, when you enter the final year of your programme, it's called a research completion period. And what that actually means is there are no fees associated with that. Um, so, and the reason for that is because you're typically writing up your thesis, finalising your thesis, and we don't feel that it's appropriate to actually charge you fees at that point in time. So just an example there on your screen is, if you were a full-time um, PhD student, so your programme would be four years, the first three years of your programme would be charged at full fees, and then the final year where you enter that research completion period for the year, there are no fees associated with that. One of the great things about that uh, is, is you'll still have access to your uh, academic supervisory team, you'll still have access to all of your online resource, and eventually when we're all able to go back on campus, you'll also have access to all of the campus facilities as well. So whether it be the library, whether it be coming over to the doctoral college, or whether you want to speak to someone in another department for our support services, all of those um, are available through your research completion period, but there will be no fees associated with that. Uh, next slide, please. So what you have in front of you now are the varying fees that we do charge um, for each of our programmes. And what you'll see in front of you there, that they do differ slightly um, based on what programme you are joining us on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and have a bit of a rundown on the costings of, of some of those. I won't go through all of them. So our standard route, our PhD route for home EU candidates for academic year 2020-21 sits at uh, £4,407 if you're full-time. And if you're part-time, it's essentially half of that at £2,000. Um, 204 pounds. If you're joining us on an international status, then it's slightly higher um, where you will have a banding of either 12,200 or 12,700. Depending on, to know what banding you would fall under is based on your discipline and on the Doctoral College webpage, which I'll provide you um, information on um, at the towards the end of this session, um, you'll be able to distinguish which band you would fall under. So that's either 12.2 or 12.7. And similar to the um, home EU rates, it's essentially half if you're part-time at £6,100. 
You'll also see that um, for our DBA program, for example, those fees do vary slightly. Um, and if you're on our home EU rate, that would be at £9,000. And if you're an international uh, status, that would be at £12,500. One of the other options we also do have is an international PhD, or commonly known as the IPHD. And again, if you um, attended the introduction session uh, this morning with Dr. Alyssa Clark, she would have gone through the various routes that we do have. But essentially, the international PhD is designed for international students where you can do your PhD essentially in your home country. There will be some additional pieces that will need to be put in place but because you're not going to be on campus the fees do vary slightly um, and they are at a rate at a full-time rate of six thousand pounds we also have um, two additional routes as well uh, which you may be familiar with is our masters uh, our ma or msc by research or our PhD through extended professional practice. And those fee rates are exactly the same as the PhD rate. So whether you're um, joining us as a home EU student or an international student, the rates are exactly the same as the PhD. And again, all of this information, if you can't jot this down now, do not worry, will be available through the doctoral college um, portal pages or web pages, which I'll provide information to towards the end. One of the key things um, to note around fees, and this is uh, very similar, this is the case for all um, higher education institutions in the UK, and probably the case overseas as well, where fees are subject to change from one academic year to another, and typically it will go up slightly. So it's important particularly to note this if you are being funded by a third party, such as your home government, or whether a private organization or your workplace are funding you, it's really important to note that it may be £4,407 if you're full-time PhD home EU this year, but it could go up slightly um, next academic year. But we will ensure that you are informed of any slight increases um, by email, and we also um, publish that on our web page um, throughout the academic year, typically over the summer once they are agreed. So just to be aware, they can go up and if you're sponsored, it may be the case that you will want to speak to your sponsor just to make sure they provided you with an updated um, sponsor letter to accommodate this, but also they're able to forecast what that funding support would actually look like for you. Next slide, please. So one of the great things about DMU is, is that we do offer a whole range of support, scholarships and discounts. And I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of those uh, now. So um, the first one is to say is the Doctoral College offers um, PhD scholarships every single year if you're joining us in line with our October start. So we have three start dates. They are October. They are um january and april so october january and april is our start date and in line with our october start date we do offer um, phd scholarships so this is where um, dmu offers a three-year fully funded phd scholarship for both home and international students and what you'll see some other institutions may not offer it to international students but at dmu we do offer those scholarships to our, both our home and international students. So what does that scholarship actually entail? If you are successful and there is an application process for that, you will be essentially, your fees will be covered for the three years. We will also support you with something called a stipend. That's essentially a monthly amount that we will give to you um, throughout the duration of your programme. So, for example, the stipend that we offered for this academic year for students that started in October 2020 was £15,000 and £15,009 per annum. And that was broken down to monthly payments. So it's just over £1,250 per month that you would get um, to support your living and to support 
you through your PhD program. So it's an absolutely fantastic scholarship package that we do offer. Now, it is a very competitive um, scholarship package that we do have. And as you appreciate, there'll be a huge number of applications that come in. The, one of the things I would say is um, keep an eye out if you are interested in applying for a scholarship in line with our October starts, keep an eye out on our web pages around March time, February, March time, where we will have all of the information there on how to apply for a scholarship and what that process would look like. Typically, though, that you'll see the advert that appear around March time. Uh, the application process is then closed around May and we hope to give you an outcome in June so you can then prepare to join us on your research degree in October within that, uh, within that year. So that's a fantastic scholarship that we do offer year on year so keep an eye out for that. One of the other areas that we also do support you on is, is discounts. And one of the things that we do have that's running at the moment is our Vice Chancellor's 2020 scholarship, which essentially provides uh, you as a former DMU graduate with a tuition fee discount of up to 50%. Now, there are a number of conditions around that in terms of um, you must have been, again, a DMU graduate, um, you must have achieved a particular outcome for your last program. Um, but um, again, our doctoral college web pages will have extensive information on the Vice Chancellor's 2020 scholarship and what that means. Now, um, it's available at the moment. Keep an eye out for it. It is available for our October start that's just gone our January start and our April 2021 start. Um, scholarships and discounts change all the time, so keep an eye out on our webpage. Um, and we have a specific scholarship um, tile, so keep looking at, out for that, and there'll be some fantastic discounts which you can take um, advantage of. Again, um, at the end of today's session, I'll also provide you a, um, an email address as well to our admissions team. So we have a dedicated um, PGR admissions team that will support your research degree applications and any queries you may have. So if you any, have any questions around scholarships and discount, do not hesitate to contact us directly on this. One of the other things that we also have is ad hoc scholarships that are available. So for example, uh, we have some absolutely fantastic research active staff and often they will secure funding, whether it be um, through the EPSRC or through some private external funding. Should they secure some funding, you will see ad hoc scholarships that do appear throughout the academic year on our web pages. So again, keep an eye out on those web pages, plan um, your application, around some of this stuff because there are some fantastic scholarships again they will be competitive uh, but as a strong applicant i am sure uh, you want to put an application in if it's appropriate for you so that's a little bit of information on scholarships and discounts so next slide please so now I'm just going to talk a little bit around additional information that you may want to be aware of and often with um, research degrees, there are additional costs. You may want to know how to pay those. You may want to know about additional support streams. So I'm just going to talk to you about three or four of these now. So the first thing is, is bench fees or supplementary fees. So you may or may not be familiar with those terms. So let me just go through what that means. So a bench fee for some research programs, um, they charge something called a bench fee. And this is a fee that's in addition to your tuition fee. And the reason why they charge a bench fee is because um, it may be the case your particular project, and because research degrees are so personalised and so individual to you and your academic supervisory team, there may be additional costs associated with your programme. For example, um, we have an amazing new NMR machine um, within our health and life sciences area. So that wouldn't cost you anything in addition to use that. However, if there is additional um, materials or additional pieces of tech that you may need that the university 
wouldn't have in any normal circumstance that would be charged at a bench fee however there will not be any surprises part way through an academic year that you will be charged this bench fee because when you apply for your program and you are um, interviewed and offered within that conversation at your interview but certainly on your offer letter it will outline what your bench fees are so before you even accept a offer from dmu on your offer letter we will be absolutely transparent that there is a bench fee associated with your program and this is what your bench fee is because we don't want any surprises and and the offer letter will be absolutely transparent and again if you have any questions around that you can ask your prospective supervisor or you can contact the doctoral college not a problem in addition to costs, unlike any other um, student, you'll also need to meet your living costs. So this will be certain things like accommodation, other related costs such as food, household goods, travel, clothing. And if you have dependencies, as, as it may be likely um, when you join your research degrees, there may be uh, costs associated with that as well. So we always do say uh, is, make sure you're familiar with how long your program's going to be. So that's why the second slide I showed you was so important to start planning now. Um, it's just to get ahead of the game, really, um, and just plan for that. And again, three, four, five years is a very long time, and I appreciate you can't plan for absolutely everything, but just having a general idea on how long your program will last and how to plan for that will be very, very important. Um, to make sure you have sufficient costs to uh, support yourself. So we talked um, at the start of this talk around tuition fee payments and how much they are and how they will be. One of the great things at DMU is, is that there are four different ways to actually pay your fees. Um, and one of the easiest and quickest ways to do that is to pay online. And one of the beauties, again, of having a dedicated research admissions team, a PGR admissions team, is, is that um, they're always there if you need any guidance, but also with on our web pages, we have extensive information, but even better on our offer letters, there will be a link there uh, to take you to our um, pages on how to pay your fees. So again, we're always keen to give you all the information that we can and how to pay your tuition fees. And uh, the final thing around additional information is the postgraduate doctoral loans. So the postgraduate doctoral loans came into play in 2018. So if you ever did a, if you've ever done a undergraduate degree in the UK or master's degree, you will know that the student loans company or Student Finance England um, offer loans essentially on behalf of the government and it's a governmental strand. And in 2018, um, the government or Student Finance England introduced postgraduate doctoral loans to, again, support research degree programmes, and they are specifically available for new students. So we'd encourage you to look at the DMU Student Finance pages, or you can go on to the government's webpage um, around doctoral loans for further information on this. So please be aware they are only available for new students. So once you start your research degree, unfortunately, they won't be available at a later date. Just a word of warning there as well is if you are applying for Masters of Science, so an MA or MSc by research, you will have to apply for a postgraduate master's loan rather than a postgraduate doctoral loan. But all of the information is on the DMU student finance page or the UK uh, government and doctoral loan uh, page should you want any information on that. So I'm gonna start wrapping up um, today's session so if we can go to the next slide please and i just mentioned i'd provide you with a couple of links there sorry a couple of pieces of information first as i mentioned we have an absolutely fantastic pgr admissions team that are there to help and support you through um, your admissions process so if you have any questions reach out to them and drop them a line at pgr admissions at dmu.ac.uk and either john becky or claire will be on hand to support you and i've also provided information there uh, to dmu.ac.uk forward slash research degrees and that will take you to the doctoral uh, college pages where you can find information on all the programs that are available 
um, which program might be best for you, the fee rates, um, and the, all the scholarship and additional support that we can provide for you as well. So, uh, next slide, please. This that moves us on really nicely onto questions now. Um, I've seen the chat um, pop up um, and I do have a couple of questions that I previously received. So I'm just going to go through them. And then if you have any questions, do not hesitate as I'm talking to pop your question in the chat and we can look to address that. So the first question was, is how do I pay and when? Good question. So how do you pay? So on one of the earlier slides, I mentioned that in your offer letter, it will tell you and so provide you a link on how to pay um, and there's four different ways but the easiest really particularly if you are an international student well really I guess if you're home EU as well is is to pay online how much you have to pay is detailed in your offer letter and when do you need to pay now for the one thing I will flag for our international students particularly if you're joining us on a tier four visa or the new visa name which is called the student root visa you are required to pay 50 percent of your fees in advance of you starting now you'll need to do that in quite a timely manner because when you pay your fees your 50 percent only then can we issue you your CAS letter which is your letter that will allow you to apply for your visa and obviously you want to allow enough time for the university to issue you your CAS, which typically takes a couple of weeks, then to apply for your visa. And all countries have varying times that it takes to process visas, but you obviously you want to start your program by the 1st of October, by the 1st of Jan, or by the 1st of April. So you'll just need to think backwards a little bit on how long you need to apply for your visa. So thinking about when you need to pay. My advice would be as soon as you're in a position, as soon as you're in a position that you've received your unconditional offer, you have accepted, make payment immediately so you can receive your CAS letter if you're joining us on the student root visa. The second question I've got is what support can the university provide if I face financial difficulties through my program? Really good question. I think one of the fantastic things about DMU is it's quite a um, thinking university and it's quite a caring university in the sense of things happen, particularly over a research degree. Um, like I said, it's a long time, three, four, five, six years to join a program. So things do happen. So we do have varying support streams. We have hardship funds that are available both to home EU and international students. Um, and what I'd always advise is when you join the program, if you think you are going to face financial difficulty or you are in financial difficulties, reach out to people. You have the doctoral college, you have a close academic supervisory team, but we also have a fantastic finance team who you can contact and start conversations on what those options may be. So my advice would be, yes, can the university support you? Yes, they can, um, but reach out to us and we can help support that. Um, We've got a question from Ala Solomon. So thank you for your question. Is the postgraduate doctoral loans available for international students? Um, at this moment in time, Ala, unfortunately, it's not. But what I would advise you to do is go onto the government's website or the DMU student finance page, and that will have extensive information on the doctoral loans, but also other financial support routes, which includes support streams for international students. So, Ala, thank you for your question. Unfortunately, no, it's not available at the moment for international students, but there are support streams are available for international students and discounts. Um, and again, keep an eye out on the doctoral college um, scholarships page, because we'll always have extensive information there on what support streams are available. So thank you for your question. And the final question before we wrap up the being mindful of the time is, is there any funding available um, during my studies for conferences and seminars? Good question, really good question. And I like that you, this individual has really thought about um, engaging with 
research and development activity that, through their program. One of the great things is, is because you will belong, when you join uh, DMU, you will belong to a faculty. So we have four faculties, um, but you'll also belong, because you are a research student, to a research institute. And often throughout your program, there will be funding calls available for you to apply for for uh, funding to conferences and seminars. The doctoral college on an ad hoc basis also has funding available, which you can apply for for conferences and seminars as well. So keep an eye out. The great thing about um, the doctoral college, we also have a research and development manager who will send you information throughout your program of all of the types of funding that are available. So we send a monthly bulletin just to keep you updated on all of the funding streams that are available throughout your program. So there'll be some real opportunities to secure funding for stuff like conferences and seminar. And hopefully when we can all start traveling again, there's overseas conferences that will really enrich your program will be available. So it's been really good um, presenting some key information to you. Again, uh, if we can just go back one slide, if that's okay. Fantastic. Again, there's some key contact information, dmu.ac.uk research degrees or PGR admissions at dmu.ac.uk where you can contact one of the admissions team um, and really have a good conversation with them if you have any questions regarding your admissions, your fees and your funding when joining us. So I'd just like to thank you all for uh, joining today's session. If there are any questions, please do reach out to us after this session. And I do hope you have a great um, rest of the open day and please do engage um, with the rest of the sessions. Thank you very much.